Hey everybody, my uh, directive study was very short, so therefore I was able to come back and, and do this. Pretty sweet. So I should be able to get a few more done before uh, fourth period starts. So we're going to start with number eight. We left off after number seven, so here we go. And this is, again, this is in the MCAS practice test, which can be found in the link uh, found in the video description, uh, session one. So here we go. A student went on a two-day hike. On day one, the student hiked 11 kilometers. On day two, the student hiked at a rate of two kilometers per hour for X hours. Graph the equation that represents Y, the total distance in kilometers, the student hiked over both days after hiking X hours on day two. This sounds a lot more complicated than it is. So once we break this down, you'll see this is really not that tough of a problem. You'll all be able to solve this if you see something like this on the test. To graph a line, select two points in the coordinate plane. A line will be drawn to the points. Okay, so also while you're doing this and while you're hopefully taking notes in the packets I provided to you, I hope that you're all um, looking at this test also on your Chromebook in another window because I think it's really important that you see how the graphing works. You're going to pick a point. It'll put a point there. Then you pick another point. It'll automatically make the line for you. Okay? You don't have to draw the line. It'll do it for you. So make sure you're using that link I'm in, that's in the video description. Okay, so... Okay, the day day one, this hiker, the student goes 11 miles, a kilometer, sorry, 11 kilometers. Then after day one, they go at a steady rate of two kilometers per hour for X number of hours. Okay, and this is specifically the hours hiked on day two. So let's start here. Okay, let's start with zero. At zero hours on day two, that means all of day one will have gone by. So at zero hours during day two, how many how many kilometers has this person hiked? Well, we know this. We know that on day one, they went 11 kilometers. So therefore, when they start day two, they're starting at 11 kilometers total already have been hiked. So we have to plot that as our y-intercept. That's our starting point, okay? And when you're doing a function, a linear function, your y-intercept is typically your starting point, okay? So 11 kilometers, let's see, this is this old distance, so it's between 10 and 12. So 11 is right here. That's where you're going to put your point, okay? Um, I'll tell you one thing that's kind of obnoxious about this graph is me complaining that this goes up by one and this goes up by twos. That is poor design, in my opinion. Anyway, so that's your starting point, and it's two kilometers per hour. So for every hour that goes by, you're going to go up by two. Now, two, not two boxes, but two units, right? And again, that's where this gets confusing. So after one hour, they will have gone two more kilometers. So instead of 11, they should have 13, right? Because 11 plus two is 13. So it should be there. So if you plot these two points, it'll make the line for you, and you're done at this point. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and make two more. So it's going to go by two, so it'd be 13, then 15, then 17, then 19. And it should look something like this. Now, I don't have a ruler with me. I left in the other room, so that's what it looks like. Okay, so again, I think the real the key is understanding the y-intercept and the rate of change, because we know a linear equation is... Uh, slope intercept form right here is mx plus b, y equals mx plus b. So m being the rate of change, right? Rate of change, also known as slope. And then this is the y-intercept. Right? So at its core, this problem is asking you to be able to create a linear equation and graph it. Okay, it's not asking you to show the linear equation, but you know, you could definitely write it. You could say, all right, well y equals we know the rate is 2x. And the starting value is 11, so 2x plus 11 would be the linear equation for it. All right, so hopefully that clarifies that a bit. Number nine. Number nine's a little tricky for a few reasons. One, because uh, we're talking about exponential rules with this one. So we have to understand exponential rules and rational exponents. And this is something that sometimes gets covered at the end of a school year. And uh, if, if you took algebra last year, your sophomores this year, it's possible you didn't really get a good um, amount of exposure to this because of the pandemic. So um, here's a little, little primer here. So this is the cube root of t, right? It's not the square root, it's the cube root, okay? So if it was a square root, it would look like this, right? Now the square root, you'd write it as t to the half power, okay? Because t to the half power times itself would be t to the one power, and Radical t times itself will give t, right? So that's how we know it's t to the one half. So t to the radical three, guess what? That's t to the one third power. I can't really see that. Let me write that a little bigger. T to the one third power. Okay. 
just as if I had, let's say, t to the fifth, let's say, radical 5, right, or fifth root of t, right? It's, the fifth root of t would actually be t to the one-fifth power, okay? Uh, an example as well, if I had t squared inside a cube root, well, it would be 2 over 3, actually, so we'd have t to the two-thirds power. It's a little bit of a quick review. Hopefully that does not confuse you. Hopefully that kind of helps a little bit. So let's look over here. Which of these are going to be equivalent? Okay, so let's go ahead and just change this to t, t to the third. You need to really know this, honestly, to have any chance of this. You need to know that t, right, the cube root of t is, is the same thing as t to the one-third power. Let me zoom in a little more. I keep writing too small. Let's try that again. All right, so immediately we know this is one of them. Okay. So now we need to find which, which others here are equivalent to that. Two-thirds is not equal to one-third. That's gone. 3 over 2 is not equal to 1 third. That's gone. We can cross those out. So we know that 2 of the remaining 3 will work. Now it comes down to exponential rules. We need to know that when you divide the same variable, you're going to subtract the exponents. For example, if I had x to the 4th over x to the 3rd, that would equal x to the 1. How do we know that? We would subtract the exponents. We'd say 4 minus 3 equals x to the 1. Okay. So that's going to help us here. Uh, so let's go let's go through this. So one third minus two thirds would be negative one third. That's definitely not positive one third. That's out. Actually has to be these two, but I'll show you how we know that. Let's subtract these. So t to the two thirds minus one third, right? Two thirds minus one third is one third. T to the one third. Yep, that's what we need. Same thing here. So t to the four thirds and there's no, there's no fraction here, but we know it's, it's 1, right? And 1 is equal to 3 over 3, so minus 3 thirds. 4 take away 3 is 1, so 2 to the 1 third. There you go. So yeah, this, this gives students trouble. This Because a lot of students just forget their exponential rules, and a lot of them don't understand that, or they forget uh, the rational exponents. So again, remember that t to the cube, a cube root of t is actually t to the 1 third power. And once you get that, it just comes down to knowing your exponential rules. I think we have time for, mm, do we have time for one more? Yeah, we have time for one more, I think. This is probably the last, yeah, it's probably the last one we did before break. After my, that's my next period class. All right, so this is number 10. So this is a geometry problem. Triangle GRV is inscribed in the circle as shown below. In the triangle, GR is congruent to GV. That means these are the same, okay? What is the measure in degrees of GR, of this arc, GR? Okay, that's arc. All right, so let's, let's start with what we do now. We know this is an inscribed angle. We know this angle corresponds to this arc right here, RV. And because it's inscribed and we know it's angle measure, we know this will be double that. So this is 20 degrees. This angle that corresponds to it, this angle, this arc that corresponds to the inscribed angle will be double its measure. So instead of 20 degrees, this will be 40 degrees. That's the first part. We also know that these two um, chords, right, are congruent. We know they're chords because their their endpoints are on the circle. And when you have congruent chords, that also means that their corresponding arcs are also congruent. So that means this arc is congruent to this arc. We know these are the same. So we're going to go ahead and assign a variable. We're just going to call that x. We can call that x too. Okay. So we know these are both going to be called x. Same thing, right? Those are air quotes, but I kind of messed it up. So we also know that the total degrees of a circle is 360. So we can say x plus x plus 40 equals 360. And we can simply solve for x, because that's what we're looking for. We're actually looking for gr, which is the arc. So we're going to say x plus x plus 40 degrees equals 360 degrees. And we're going to simply solve for x. So I'm zoom in here so it's a little bigger. All right, so x plus x is 2x plus 40 equals 360. We're going to subtract 40 from both sides because that's our constant. So we're going to have 2x equals 320. And we're going to divide both sides by our coefficient, which is 2. And x will be equal to 160 degrees. And that's it. Let's zoom out a little bit here. So 160 degrees. And that's our answer. So. Yeah, you know, just a quick review. Let's look back at the problems we just did. So this first one's really an algebra one problem, right? Knowing how to 
create an equation and then graph the equation. You could skip the creation, I guess, and you could just skip, go right to the graphing if you understand it well enough, but I think there's value in knowing how to create the equation first. This next one's really more about rational exponents and exponential rules. Okay. And this last one's a geometry problem having to do with circles, inscribed angles, and arcs. So uh, we'll start up again tomorrow. I have a full prep tomorrow. So I, this next one is a doozy. There's a, there's a four-parter. And after that, I think there's just a few more. Two more. Yeah. So I should be able to finish this practice test tomorrow. Uh, please let me know if this is helpful or not. If you have any feedback, um, welcome. You know, constructive criticism. Cr constructive criticism is always welcome. I can't even speak today. All right. See you guys later.